Hi, everyone. Thank you. Uh, my name is Cy Rossignol with the Casker Center for Accessible Technology at the University of Washington. Um, and I'm talking about more sidewalks. So the Tasker Center aims to develop uh, technology that will have a big impact on people with disabilities. We are working now on the Transportation Data Equity Initiative uh, project uh, funded by the IPS for the US and the Open Sidewalks Project. So we're pretty heavily into sidewalks right now. I'm presenting today for Ricky Zhang. He's a postdoc fellow at the Tasker Center. And unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it today. So this is Ricky's work and the work of his advisors, Anat Paskey and Bill Hatch. So we already heard a lot about why sidewalks data is important. People want this data. Uh, people want applications that can use this data, better user experiences. And as we've heard, this, this data is kind of hard to come by. Cities have sidewalks data, but it's often for asset management. It's not connected into a network that we can use for applications and for routing. So people have been mapping sidewalks, but it's a, it's a lot of work. Uh, so I'm a software developer and a local mapper in Seattle. And I uh, got involved with the Tasker Center because they noticed that I was mapping sidewalks over there. They kind of hooked me up some open street maps. And for anybody who's mapped a few square miles of sidewalk, you, you know that it can be a really grueling uh, job. It's tedious, pretty error prone, and you know it takes a lot of time. So Ricky's been working on some solutions to try and get the machines to map sidewalks for us. We're using machine learning and computer vision technology to generate sidewalk data. And today we're going to talk about two approaches. The top side of the slide shows kind of a big, high level bulk sidewalk data generation approach. And the bottom half of the slide shows a more fine detail approach to collecting stuff that's in the sidewalk environment adjacent to these sidewalks. So let's talk about the first one, bulk sidewalk data. We want to feed the data that we have to the computer and hopefully it seeks out a sidewalk data set. Um, and so the data is, is the important part here. And we have, we have lots of data that contains sidewalks in it. Aerial imagery shows us where all the sidewalks are. The, the sidewalks are in there, but we don't have them in a format that's annotated for other applications to use. So we're looking for a way here to extract that sidewalk information from other data sets, aerial imagery or city data sets that contain sidewalks as polygons instead of as a connected network graph. And we want the computer to find the sidewalks in them. So we can see a bunch of different kinds of data here in this process. And we have some input data, intermediate data, and output data. Our input data will be satellite imagery or aerial imagery, a street graph, and we'll rasterize that into images so that we can feed it through computer vision tasks. And 
those will produce some predictions. So we have a rasterized path way graph prediction here, and it will end up as a vector graph of a sidewalk network. And we want to produce these in a standard format. So our preferred format is, of course, the open sidewalks format. So this system is called Placer. And as we can see on the left-hand side, we have inputs into our algorithms here. And on the right-hand side, out comes a connected pedestrian network graph. And this process fuses together the, uh, the data that comes in in each step and combines it together to eventually end up at the output that we were looking for. So step one, we need to seed the process. And this is what uh, we're calling pedestrian fur because it infers where the pedestrian paths are from a street graph. So we know where the streets are. Those are pretty well mapped. And if we take those, we can kind of assume that there's a sidewalk on each side. And uh, I know many streets don't have sidewalks, but this is the first part of the step, the first part of the process. So we generate our initial set of sidewalks here. And those will line up with all of the streets that we're starting with. We seed, it, we seed that there, and then we use segmentation network here to predict where the real sidewalks are. And the street graph helps us to narrow the scope of this problem. So the segmentation network will analyze the aerial imagery and the raster images of the streets, and then we'll combine them here into our prediction. So this image shows some different approaches trained where the model is trained only with aerial imagery, with just street map imagery, and then we combine them and train with both. So that last part of the process is the correction step. We take the output from pedestrian fur the output from computer vision, and we combine them together to get our final output graph. And that one will be more accurate than the outputs from either of the previous steps. This slide here shows a comparison of the process here. We start with the pedestrian fur hypothesis. That's the red line. It's not, it's not very close to where the sidewalks are. And then we correct it with the segmentation network, and we get a blue line. And that brings us a lot closer to the green, which is the hand-mapped sidewalk graph that humans have created. So it, it's not quite lining up with that yet, but with some additional improvements, this model can get pretty close. And of course, the benefit is how quickly we can map sidewalks. So what, what would take a human hours and hours and hours to map, we can generate large regions in, in just a couple of hours. So far, we've used this process in King County, other areas of Washington and Maryland, and in Oregon. So we've got a lot of coverage here from uh, the outputs of this model. So some challenges with satellite imagery and aerial imagery, of course, is that you're kind of uh, dependent on the quality of the imagery. There, there are regions that don't have very good aerial imagery, and it makes it hard to predict where the sidewalks are from that. And then, of course, aerial imagery can be skewed, cameras skew on them, or 
included are things like trees or buildings. And those are some challenges that we need to work through to make this more accessible. So that was the, the bulk generation of sidewalks. We covered lots of geographical area. So the next part here is collecting more detail from the environment around the sidewalk and more data that is useful to pedestrians that may be walking in the real world. And this one here is actually my favorite project. On the left-hand side, you can see we have a push cart. And we've stuck a camera and a single board computer on this push cart. And an operator will walk around and push the cart around the sidewalks or the lack of sidewalks. And the computer vision model on this system performs segmentation to see what we're walking next to so that we can identify obstacles that are in the in the path that a pedestrian is walking in or something that may block a wheelchair or something that we need to perhaps notify a blind person of while they're walking along the sidewalk so on the left side we see the system scanning the sidewalk and it's measuring how wide it is. And we can use this information for people who are on wheelchairs so that we can find paths that are wide enough for them to navigate with their equipment. On the right-hand side, the system is identifying the bus shelter, the trash can, the signs, the light posts, and other obstacles that pedestrians encounter while they're walking along. And it, it creates a map of these um, features that we can uh, merge with our bulk data set to create very high, highly detailed maps of the sidewalk environment. Oh, I apologize. So, all right, there's our map of the output of this system. We have a couple of studies, North Seattle, and hopefully this will eventually be a layer that we get into RAPID so that we can merge it in like our Facebook does, Microsoft Program Statement Sets. Thank you.